Before we get into today's video, I did wanna let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance in hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know. <laughs> Y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all have had another wonderful week. You guys, I feel so tired. Can you see the bags? I'm very, very tired. By the way, this will be y'all's last video of me, of moi, with my hair looking like this. Next week, when the video comes out, it will be a whole new look. If you guys wanna know or see all about that process, make sure you guys go over and subscribe to Casually Christina. We do things more casually over there. I also have a Patreon. My Patreon is for 18 and up. Over there, we do more personal story times. We go live. It's a good time if you're 18 and up and you'd like to join. And I also have an Instagram and all of those are always linked down in the description box if you'd like to come and check me out. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about an Australian case. This is the case of Zara Baker. Have y'all heard about this? Before we go any further, I did want to stop and thank today's sponsor, HelloFresh. HelloFresh, thank you so much for sponsoring today's video. You guys, I have been using HelloFresh for well over a year now, and I was super excited when they reached out to me and asked if I wanted to partner with them. HelloFresh uses different recipes to choose from to help you break out of the rut. You know, when you're cooking the same things over and over and over again, HelloFresh also helps you to save time. It cuts stressful meal prepping and planning so you can just cook dinner and enjoy at the table. HelloFresh delivers fresh produce that arrives at peak season so you can serve your family the most delicious, scrumptious meals ever. If you guys want to try HelloFresh, make sure to go to HelloFresh.com and use code ChristinaRandall14 to get 14 free meals plus free shipping. Again, go to HelloFresh.com and use code ChristinaRandall14 to get 14 meals plus free shipping today. Thanks again, HelloFresh. Zara was a beautiful, strong, vibrant little 10 year old girl. She had actually been diagnosed with bone cancer at five years old and had a lot of obstacles to overcome after that. But her story, unfortunately, does not end in the rosy picture that we would all hope it would. So let's just start at the beginning. Zara Baker was born on November 16th, 1999 in Wales, Australia. She was born to her mother, Emily, and her father, Adam Baker. Emily was 19 years old when she gave birth to Zara and she suffered from severe postpartum depression. Very severe. Her postpartum depression was so bad that Emily felt like her daughter was not safe around her. So she decided to step out of the picture and let Zara's father, Adam, raise her. Emily felt like Zara would be safe with her father, Adam. Adam lived with his parents at this time and Adam's parents just was so elated and so excited to have a little grandbaby, a little granddaughter. And of course the grandparents got to give all the love to her and Adam had other family members. So in Emily's mind, she was like, this is the best thing for my daughter. She's even been quoted to say, say, I didn't have the strength to keep doing it. I didn't want to hate my child. I didn't want to be the news story that people hear about the mother who drowned her child or who smothered them. Like that is so terrifying to think about. 
real quick, if you guys ha have postpartum or have any of those feelings, please get help. Please protect yourself and your child because it is a real thing. But to keep going here, Emily was having those very scary thoughts and decided that her daughter Zara would be much more safe with her father and his family. In 2004, Adam took Zara and moved along with him, his daughter, and his parents to Queensland. He got a new job at a sugar factory and he was excited to start over new and have a fresh start there. Zara was a happy little girl. She was loved by everybody and surrounded by her family. She was never spent a moment alone. And then in 2005, the family got the devastating news that Zara had bone cancer, which any cancer is bad, but bone cancer is supposed to be one of the most painful and hard cancers that there is. I can just envision this five-year-old little girl and she must have really went through it. And she did and to the point that she actually had to have one of her legs from the bottom half amputated. And from there, she learned how to walk with a prosthetic leg. Now she was just as lively and kept going and tough and her family was so proud of her. She was a little fighter. But then not long after that, she was diagnosed with lung cancer and she had to have part of her lung removed. During this time, she went under a very aggressive chemotherapy. And during this chemotherapy, the chemotherapy took most of her hearing. Zara then started wearing hearing aids so she could hear some. And so you guys are getting this picture of this little girl from the moment she was born she was a fighter. She had to be to survive. And she just kept going with a smile on her face and little short dirty blonde hair and freckles across her nose and cheeks. She was loved. She was working on her health and she was happy. However, Adam at this point was a very lonely man. I mean, you can imagine what he was going through as a single father. Yes, he had his parents, but he you know, he was lonely. He was going through this as his daughter being sick and he wanted somebody to intimately lean on. He would later say that he would dream of having a wife one day and having more children. That way Zara would have siblings to play with and to love on and to support her just like he did. And so from there, he started looking online on a dating site. There's a social networking website that is or was back then called IMVU. And on there, you can just do all kinds of little fun stuff. And he created a profile. And from here, he met this woman named Elisa. Now, Elisa lived here in the United States. And the more that Adam and Elisa began to talk, the more he was just falling in love with her. I mean, she seemed absolutely perfect. Elisa told him that she had done all of these different jobs before. She had been a police officer. She was shot in the line of duty. You know, she, she was just this noble woman as far as he knew. And she even came to visit him over in Australia and him and his family. And I mean, he said that Elisa and Zara hit it off immediately. I mean, Zara just loved her and Elisa loved Zara and it just seemed perfect. And Adam decided that he was going to move with him and Zara to the States so he could marry Elisa and they could start a family there together and raise Zara and Zara would have this mom, this mother figure in her life and everything was going to be perfect. <sighs> Now, at this point, Adam's family became very concerned. Over in Australia, the healthcare system is very different over there. All of Zara's doctors and healthcare visits and surgeries and chemos was free. And his parents knew that if Adam came to the States, that over here, we have to pay for our healthcare and it is quite expensive. Don't get me started, but very expensive and his family was concerned. Well, Elisa was like, no worries. I will pay for it if you guys come here. I have money, I work. She is going to be taken care of. And Adam, who was just drunk in love, decided that it was gonna work out. It would be just fine. He packed up all of his stuff, climbed a plane with his baby girl and flew to the States. Now this was in 2008 and Adam almost immediately married Elisa. Now Elisa has three children of her own who 
from what I could find, were not in her life. It is said that she didn't have a good relationship with her kids. I have no idea what she told Adam why she didn't have her kids, but Adam was happy for it to be just their little family and he was hoping to have more kids. And so now he's living in the States. It's 2008. He's married Elisa. It's them three. They all have the same last name and he thinks everything is going to be a picture perfect life. Things were really good at first. Again, Adam said that Elisa and Zara just loved each other so much, but Adam had to get a job here in the States and he began to work and work a lot. See, Adam wasn't a citizen here, so he had to work under the table, which because of that, he ended up working a lot more hours. He took all of the crap hours at whatever crap hours. I mean, any job is a blessing, but you know what I mean. Not the less desirable hours at the businesses that he worked at, all under the table money. You know, because of that, it's harder for him to move up into positions and they began to struggle. And he also realized that Elisa did not have any of this money that she said that she she had, but he was here now. I mean, what was he going to do? He's then moved from another country here. He's here working illegally at this point, and he's got his, you know, his daughter here who's had a multitude of health issues. I mean, you're talking about bone cancer, chemotherapy, lung cancer, you know, hearing problems. Like, so he was just doing what he could, and he was hoping for the best. Around this time, though, Zara had been enrolled in school and the teachers started to notice that they thought that she may be being abused at home. The teachers called Department of Children and Families because they were seeing signs in Zara and Zara was saying things and they were just really concerned with her. Every time that Elisa would have to come up to the school because there was something reported, she became more and more frustrated with the school for, you know, overstepping their boundaries. And at this point, Zara's teacher was so concerned that the teacher actually gave Zara her private phone number and said, if you are in any trouble at any time, please call me. Well, when Elisa found this out, she flipped out. She was starting to turn into what we would call the evil stepmother. She wasn't a joy to be around. Zara was really struggling, but again, they were here at this point. Her dad, Adam, was working long hours. He was the only one working. They kept bouncing from house to house because they couldn't pay the bills. And Zara was spending 90% of her time in the care with Elisa. In one home that they were living in, the neighbors actually called Department of Children and Family Services on Elisa because they would hear her outside yelling at Zara. You know, Zara had a prosthetic leg and there would be times that she would they, she would be out there yelling at her that she wasn't running fast enough and that she was faking it and that she needed to she needed to hurry up and she needed to learn to do this and whatever. I mean, and the girl, <laughs> give her a break. The neighbors said they were horrified by the way that she would treat Zara. And this is outside in front of the neighbors. You know, you can only imagine what was going on inside behind closed doors. And the neighbors hardly ever seen Zara's father because Zara's father was gone working. The environment Zara lived in, she was locked in her room, allowed five minutes out of day to eat. That was it. Um, she was beat almost every time I was over there for just, just the smallest things. Uh, if Lisa would get mad, she would take it out on Zara things the kid didn't deserve. Um, she just had a horrible home life. Um, the neighbors would also say that they were convinced that Elisa was selling substances and that Adam didn't know about it. Like she would go and get different medications from doctors and stuff, and she was selling them out of the house. She had all kinds of people in the home while he was gone and he had no idea about it. There was also another secret that Adam had no idea about his new wife. She was actually still married to her previous husband. And that husband was coming around the house in front of Adam. And Elisa was telling Adam that her other current husband was her brother. And he was going along with it. Later, when Elisa was interviewed, the interviewer asked her, why would you tell your husband Adam that your other husband was your brother. And she said, because Adam would never let my other husband around Zara if he knew we were still married. Like, uh, yeah, uh, that's exactly, that's right. But that was her train of thought. Another secret that Adam did not know about his wife, that he had moved his daughter from another country to be with here in the United States, 
was that he was actually her seventh husband, her seventh. So you guys, the secrets were deep and dark. Adam's parents just knew that she was being abused. They didn't really know what to do about it. I mean, they were all the way in another country. They couldn't just come and save her. And there was even rumors that Elisa was locking Zara in the attic and that's where she would stay at all the time. People saw little Zara with a black eye and Adam would later say that Elisa said that she had ran into a cabinet. And when she went to school and the teacher saw the black eye, Elisa told them the same thing. When she was questioned on it, Elisa said, you know how clumsy she is. She, I mean, she's missing a leg. I mean, she falls all over the place because of it. She had a, one time I remember she had a black eye and she said it was from the door, but we all knew it, or, you know, we suspected it was from Elisa, so. And Adam would later say that he asked Zara how she got the black eye and she said that she ran into a cabinet, but later everybody is wondering if that was even true, if Zara was just terrified. I mean, you guys, she was spending all of her time with Elisa. And we talked about this in a couple videos pri prior, like when a child is being abused at home and when they try to say something and reach out and they're sent back to their abuser that they live with, children tend to shut down because that's their way to protect themselves. You know, they don't want to go out and say, yes, she's doing this. But what are you going to do about it? You're going to just send me home with her. And then guess what? The doors are going to close. The blinds are going to go down and anything is going to happen. And you're not going to be here to save me. And so, ah, uh, it's so heartbreaking. So as many, many stories that we've heard prior to this, lots of CPS phone calls were made. They came out, they checked the house. Everything seemed fine. They left. Now, you guys, I know that there's great CPS workers, so I'm not trying to talk about the whole entire system, but we need some help over here in America. That's a whole nother video. Let's keep going. They came out, they checked, they saw that she was not in an immediate threat. They left and the case was closed. However, on October 9th of 2010, Elisa called 911 and said that there was a small bush fire in her backyard. My husband works for a, a tree maintenance company and our backyard's on fire. Your what's on fire? The backyard. We've got big mulch piles and wood piles because okay. we sell firewood and stuff. Now this was around 5 a.m. It was very early in the morning for there to just be a random fire. They had a bunch of leaves and stuff in the backyard. And right around the same time, her husband Adam called 911 too and was just kind of like, hey, there's a fire in the backyard. The cops came, they, the fire department came, they put out the fire to make sure it wouldn't grow because of all the dry leaves and stuff. It's fall, it's October. And they knew that it had to be an arson thing. Somebody came and set that fire because there was no way it would have started on its own. Well, while the cops and the investigators were looking around, they went over to the work truck that Adam had been driving because he is working for another company at this point. And they found a note on the passenger side door of Adam's work truck that read something to the lines of, we have your daughter, your son is going to be next, we need a million dollars and no police. Well, the cops saw it and he was like, is your daughter home? And Adam said, yes, yeah, she's in there. He said, do you have a son? She said, no. Well, the way that Adam put it together with the investigators is somebody must have come to the house thinking that that is where his boss lived because it was his boss's work truck. The investigator and Adam called Adam's boss and Adam's boss jumped up out of bed and said, my daughter is home. My son is home. Everybody's safe. Nobody's taken, but he hurried to their house. They came to the house. They all talked. And then everybody left and everything seemed just fine. Around 2 p.m. that same day, Adam called 911 and said that his daughter Zara was missing. Now, this was such a bizarre 911 phone call, in my opinion. I mean, I, I mean, I guess that not everybody has the same type of personality as me, but if my child was missing. I'm accounting 911. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. I need police. Which police? Uh, hey, Chris. I sent a note from my boss's daughter. Um, I got up this, a little while ago, and it appears they took my daughter instead of my boss's daughter. Okay. How old your daughter? She's ten. Um, she's handicapped. She has a prosthetic leg, so that. How long has she been missing? Um, we checked in there last night about 2.30 and she was there and all this happened last night about 5 o'clock so I 
don't know if they set a fire in the yard to distract us to go out and mm -hmm. they snug in the door. Or, I don't know. Okay, I'm not familiar with what happened last night. What happened last okay. night? Last night we were woken up. My dog woke me up and I had a fire in the backyard and somebody had put gas in my company vehicle that I drive for work. They left a ransom note on the company vehicle to my boss saying they had his daughter and his son was next. Um, and his daughter's fine. His daughter came with him here last night when I called him. And uh, it appears they may have taken my daughter instead of his daughter. I would be in a complete panic, but he was so calm about it and even made a little chuckle later on in the 911 phone call saying something to the effect, well, she's 10, you know, she's coming into her like teenagehood and she only comes out of her room when she needs or wants something like she's 10. Okay. She's not 16. She's 10. My son is nine, about to be 10 in a few weeks. Like they don't act like that, at, in my opinion, at 10 years old. Nevertheless, the cops come out and they look for her and she is nowhere to be found. An Amber Alert is immediately set because, I mean, she is a 10 year old little girl and nobody knows where she is. And when Adam is questioned, he said the last time that he saw her was at 2.30 a.m. He said when he got in from work, he went in to her room, checked on her, saw her laying in the bed, and that was the last time that he saw her. That would later change. Before you know it, Adam and Elisa and Zara Street was full of cops and investigators. They got the dogs and they let the dogs sniff around to try to see if they could pick up on her scent. And the dogs alerted on both of the vehicles of Elisa's and of Adam's for human remains. I didn't know that they knew different scents like that, like, like if it's a human remain or if it's a live person, but b the dogs hit on both vehicles for human remains. How terrifying. On October 11th, Adam went on Good Morning America pleading for his daughter's return and for whoever had her to please bring her back, let her be safe, you know, just pleading, pleading to the public for his daughter's return. Now, right around this time, Elisa was actually arrested for some other stuff that she did. So she was in jail, which is the perfect place to be questioned by investigators. They went, they pulled her from her pod, or they began to question her. When they questioned her, Elisa admitted that she wrote that note. Okay, remember the note that was found on the truck? I mean, how weird is this? Why would you write that note? Nevertheless, she admitted that she wrote the note, but that was all she admitted to. As the search teams continued to look for little 10-year-old Zara, on October 26th, her prosthetic leg was found. When they found her prosthetic leg, they knew that, I mean, it was just bad at this point. They went back to the jail and they began to question Elisa again. I mean, they were hounding her. They were telling her she was going to get the death penalty that they found, you know, they, who knows what they told her, but I know how they do it in America. They probably told her that Adam had done told on her and they knew, I mean, who knows, but they were telling her she was going to get the death penalty. And if she wanted to avoid the death penalty, she needed to just tell the truth. Where was Zara? Who had her? What happened to her? And Elisa began to break. Her story to the investigators was that Zara was sick. Her health was declining and she had noticed for a few weeks that she was just not acting normal, but she thought, okay, you know, whatever. She had been through a lot. She was sick, whatever. And that on September 24th, 
she found Zara dead. She said that she gave CPR to her for 30 minutes. Started doing CPR. We need to go ahead and call 911. Trying to revive her. And when she realized that she was gone, she called Adam and told him. She said Adam rushed home from work and that Elisa was freaking out. She was frantic, like she's dead, she's dead. And Adam said, calm down. He said, Lisa, sit down, take you some medicine, calm down, I'll take care of it. He said, you're gonna take your medicine and everything's gonna be fine. I've got a plan. Lisa said he then took Zara's 10 year old little body, went into the bathroom, turned the shower on and turned all the water on so it was a muffled sound and she didn't really know what he was doing at the time. Well, I thought maybe it was a strange ritual that he did. You know, for all I know, the Aborigines, I, I don't know. Right, but that what he was doing was dismembering her body and putting it into different bags. She said that Adam didn't wanna get deported. He didn't wanna leave his beloved wife. And so therefore he was doing whatever he had to do to take care of the situation. She said then that they would put the different body parts in these different bags and they began to scatter them in different areas. The cops went to these different areas and began to collect the different parts of little baby Zara, and I say baby, I know she was 10, but her whole life was ahead of her. Collect her body parts. Now, they didn't find all of them. When they did an autopsy, they could tell that two different tools was used on this baby girl's body. They were never able to actually find what the cause of death was, but hold that thought while we keep going here. But they were able to tell that maybe animals had gotten into these bags. Now, Adam was arrested but they were never able to prove that he had a part of any of this because he denied it. He denied it and said he had no idea what she was talking about. She was lying. He was at work that day that he had nothing to do with any of it. Well, they checked the phone records and saw that he was indeed either at work that day, but what he, they saw was that Elisa, on the day that she said that they were scattering the body parts, that she was calling his phone and that her phone was at the actual places where the body parts were. They, it was pinging on those towers and that his phone was pinging at work in another area. So there is a lot of people that still believe that he was involved in it. When the cops went into the home to do a complete investigation, they found that over Zara's bed, with using like the black and light technology and all that, there was 18 splatters of blood that had obviously been cleaned up, but they can tell. So what they think happened, and nobody still knows what happened to her, what they think happened was she was hit in the head with something, and that's how she was killed. And the blood splatters that were on the walls was from that, and also what her... Her skull was never found, so they can't really tell if that's what happened. But it's also believed nobody really knows if if Elisa did this all herself, if she had help from one of her husbands or one of the people she was selling stuff to or why she even did this. And maybe the husband didn't know. But what we do know is that her husband said that he saw Zara at 2.30 a.m. that morning but obviously he did not see her because she had been passed away since the prior month. So you mean to tell me she passed away on September 26th? You reported her missing in the middle of October and you hadn't seen your daughter in that many weeks? Like, so Adam, when all he was released from all this court stuff, he ended up flying back to Australia and that's where he's living with his family. People still, when they see him in the streets, they yell at him and call him a murderer. They do not believe that he was innocent in all this. What makes this the worst thing to me is that Elisa took a plea deal. She ended up getting a plea deal with only 15 to 18 years. She is scheduled to get out in 2025. Like literally in, what, three and a half years now? And, and this was done to this baby girl? I don't believe justice was served in this case. And if the father, this is now we're getting into my opinions. If the father had nothing to do with this, 
Shame on him. And I'm sure he feels bad if he's innocent in this, if he's innocent. And he should. He really should. You didn't see your baby girl. You didn't protect your baby girl. What are you doing? Moving, just moving. Don't even really know this lady. <sighs> so sad. So rest in peace, little baby Zara, who fought so hard to beat these different cancers, learned to walk on a prosthetic leg, still kept a smile on her face, and her life was taken from her, from the evils of another human or humans. What do I think happened? Her story makes sense. However, she lies so much. I mean, she lies so much. So who really knows? But I also think it's a possibility that her other husband or somebody else helped her. What I do not believe is she did it all alone. I don't believe she did it all alone. There's two different tools that was used. I don't believe she did it all alone. So what do you guys think? Have you heard about this story? What, what, how sad is this case? Um, again, another case where child abuse is happening, it's being reported, and the child ends up losing their life. Completely devastating. Do not forget, if you see a person being abused, a child, an elderly person, please, please, please report it. Keep reporting it. If you know it's actual abuse, do not turn the other eye. You could save somebody's life. As always, my loves, thank you so, so much for watching this video. Please do not forget to like it. It's a free way that you can help your girl out. And until next time, I love you guys so, so, so very much. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye. Love you guys. Bye. We are, we are dreaming in the dark. We are nothing more than dust. Search, but you stay low.